Mark Hersam is Walter P. Murphy Professor of Material Science and Engineering and Professor of Chemistry and Medicine at Northwestern. As a researcher, Mark takes an interdisciplinary approach that draws on techniques of material science, physics, engineering, and chemistry, and has established himself as a leading experimentalist in the area of hybrid organic inorganic materials. His numerous awards include the MacArthur Fellowship, the Beckman Young Investigator Award, the National Science Foundation Career Award, a Sloan Research Fellowship, the Presidential Early Career Award for Scientists and Engineers, normally called PKs, and six Teacher of the Year Awards. He seemingly can do everything. He has a bachelor's degree and a PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and a Master's of Philosophy degree from the University of Cambridge. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce my esteemed colleague, Mark Herson. Good afternoon. I would like to begin by thanking Dean Julio Otino for the kind introduction and the opportunity to address the 2016 PhD graduating class of the McCormick School of Engineering. On behalf of the students and the faculty, I would also like to express my gratitude to all the family members and friends who have supported this, this distinguished group of students throughout their PhDs, and especially thank them for traveling to Northwestern University to be here today to join in the celebration. And most importantly, I would like to acknowledge the students for achieving the ultimate prize in higher education, the PhD. Please join me in congratulating them on this singular accomplishment. For the students, this is likely the final of many graduation ceremonies in their academic careers. It turns out that my two daughters, Angie and Abby, both of whom are in the audience today with my wife Sue, are at the opposite end of the graduation spectrum. Abby having just graduated from kindergarten, <laughs> and Angie having just graduated from elementary school. Yesterday I asked Angie what she liked the most about her graduation ceremony. Was it the video montage of her and her classmates? No. Was it the inspirational speeches by the faculty? Definitely not. <laughs> so what was it? Uh, her answer, the free ice cream truck after the ceremony. <laughs> so if my speech fails to meet expectations today, please go out afterwards and buy yourself some ice cream and then send the bill to Dean Julio Otino. <laughs> And I'm sure that Julio will be happy to deduct the expenses for my next paycheck. <laughs> In any event, I decided to introduce my daughters uh, during the speech, since children have the innocence and curiosity to ask seemingly simple, yet oftentimes deeply profound questions. One of my goals today is to attempt to answer some of these types of questions regarding the PhD. So let's begin with the most basic question, namely, what is a PhD? The simple answer, of course, is that a PhD is a doctor of philosophy. With this terminal degree, all of our graduates will no longer be Mr. or Ms., but rather doctor, which will inevitably lead strangers to ask them for medical advice, <laughs> at which point they'll have to explain that they're not that kind of doctor. Seriously though, it is an interesting question to ask when did the PhD begin and how did we get to the modern PhD? Strictly speaking, the origins of the doctor of philosophy can be traced back to the Middle Ages in Europe. But in interestingly, it was not widely adopted in the United States until at least the middle part of the 19th century and considerably later at many American universities. Indeed, when reading the history of the McCormick School of Engineering, I was surprised to learn that in 1955, five department chairs resigned because they objected to the dean's efforts to shift 
the school's focus to graduate level research. In other words, in the course of only two generations, we have gone from a mutiny against the PhD to today where nearly 100 PhDs will be hooded. So why have the past 50 years seen such a dramatic shift in favor of the PhD? This seemingly simple question definitely does not have a simple answer. And I suspect that if you ask my colleagues sitting behind me today, you might get dozens of different answers. However, since I'm the one standing at the podium, I will give you my personal perspective. In particular, I would contend that the most profound change in society over the past 50 years is the advent of the computer and the rise of information technology. With the internet and the approximately 25 billion internet-connected devices worldwide, which is equivalent to 3.5 internet-connected devices for each human being on Earth, the amount of new information being generated every day is 2.5 quintillion bytes of data, where one quintillion is a one followed by 18 zeros. Said a different way, 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years alone. This so-called big data is impacting society in countless ways, including higher education. Recognizing this challenge and opportunity, Dean Julio Tino recently announced a massive expansion of computer science at Northwestern University. I'm sure that the new algorithms and data processing schemes developed by my computer science colleagues will help all of us better manage this explosion in information. However, in the meantime, what we have is a situation where no one individual can begin to keep up with the rapidly growing body of knowledge. And thus, the only realistic strategy is for domain experts to specialize and master some subsection of it. Hence, I would argue that the PhD, which develops extreme depth and mastery of a specific topic, is increasingly valuable in the modern world. With that said, as our PhD students will tell you, the most interesting problems at the frontiers of engineering at the boundaries of multiple fields of study. And therefore, the modern PhD student must not only be a domain expert, but also able to work effectively with others whose expertise is radically different from their own. The increasing importance of collaboration in highly interdisciplinary team-based science is easily identified within our graduating class of PhD students. Whereas the key publications from my PhD only 16 years ago had only three authors, me, one undergraduate assistant, and my advisor, the key publications from the four students in my research group who are being hooded today consistently approach or exceed 10 authors from multiple departments, if not multiple institutions. The whole brain engineering approach, which is the hallmark of the McCormick School of Engineering and combines the deep technical knowledge and analytical skills of the left brain with the creativity, open-mindedness, and communication skills of the right brain, provides a key competitive advantage for our graduating PhD students. I highly recommend that our PhD graduates exploit this advantage as they move forward with the next steps in their careers. This then leads me to the final question that my daughters have recently posed to me. Specifically, what happens after you earn a PhD? When the ceremony is over, I'm sure that this question will be asked many times to our graduates. I'm also certain that the answers will be widely varying. If we just look at the four graduating PhD students from my group today, we'll find Heather Arnold pushing the boundaries of microelectronics at Intel, Leila Jobber Ansari pursuing a career in technical consulting at McKinsey and Company, Deep Jariwala advancing nanophotonic technology as a Resnick postdoctoral fellow at Caltech, and Brian Corrali departing soon for a scanning, tunneling, microscopy research position in Europe. Our nearly 100 PhD students today will be spanning the globe and impacting nearly every corner of society. I'm deeply proud of all of them and personally envious of the challenges, adventures, and solutions that will inevitably define the next stage of their lives. 
In conclusion, I know that a commencement address is usually filled with pithy advice and suggestions for the future, and perhaps I couldn't help myself and slipped a few of those into my speech already. However, during the course of a graduate student's PhD, I've realized that the flow of information invariably reverses course. While the start of a PhD finds the advisor as a teacher to the advisee, the end of a PhD is quite the opposite. I would thus like to conclude today by thanking our graduating PhD students for all that I've learned from them during their time at Northwestern University. You are the heart of higher education and the reason why I, and I believe everyone in this room, should have great optimism about the future. Please stay in touch and continue to share your advice and wisdom in your new role as alumni. Congratulations again, and thank you to everyone for your attention.